Greetings, brilliant scholars, and welcome to Learning with Avant Garde Books. I hope you and your family are well. Today, I have the pleasure of sharing a presentation with you about Mary McLeod Bethune. She was an educator, a philanthropist, humanitarian, civil rights activist, and she was also a womanist. I want you to get into a very comfortable place, get relaxed, and let's learn about Mary McLeod Bethune. Dr. Bethune once said, We have a powerful potential in our youth, and we must have the courage to change old ideas and practices so that we may direct their power toward good ends. Mary Jane McLeod was born in Maysville, South Carolina, on July 10, 1875. Sam and Patsy McLeod, her parents, were former slaves. Mary received a scholarship and recommendation to attend Scotia Seminary, now Barbara Scotia College in North Carolina. She graduated from the school May 1, 1884. She later attended the Institute for Home and Foreign Missions in Chicago. That school is now Moody Bible Institute. In 1904, Mary McLeod Bethune started a school for African-American girls in Daytona Beach with $1.50. Her one-room schoolhouse became the Daytona Normal and Industrial School for Negro Girls before merging with Cookman Institute for Boys in 1931. She served as the president of Bethune-Cookman College for over 40 years. The educational institution that Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune founded over 100 years ago still exists today as Bethune-Cookman University. Mary McLeod married Albertus Bethune in 1898. The couple had a son named Albert McLeod Bethune Jr. While they were separated for many years, they never divorced. Albertus died in 1918 from tuberculosis. Mary McLeod Bethune founded the National Council of Negro Women in 1935. Its motto is commitment, unity, and self-reliance. She also served as the vice president of the NAACP for 15 years. In Florida, she worked to register black voters. Her actions infuriated many whites, and she was threatened by members of the resurgent KKK. Mary McLeod Bethune's activism was noticed by U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt. In 1936, President Roosevelt appointed Bethune as a director of the National Youth Administration's Division of Negro Affairs, making her the first black woman to head a federal agency. Her primary role was as a counselor on child welfare and as an advisor for issues involving Black America. In 
In 1911, Bethune opened the first black hospital in Daytona, Florida. The idea came after one of her students almost died because the whites only hospital refused to give her proper medical care. McLeod's hospital was open for 20 years and saved many black lives until Daytona's public hospital, Halifax, agreed to open a separate hospital for people of color. Black people would not fully integrate into the public hospital's main location until the 1960s. Dr. Bethune once said, if our people are to fight their way up out of bondage, we must arm them with the sword and the shield and the buckler of pride. Believe in themselves and their possibilities based upon a sure knowledge of the achievements of the past. In the early 1950s, Bethune served on a committee for national defense and was sent as a U.S. delegate to Liberia. Here's some fun facts about Liberia. It is Africa's oldest republic. Although founded by freed American and Caribbean slaves, Liberia is mostly inhabited by indigenous Africans with the slaves' descendants comprising 5% of the population. Mary McLeod Bethune co-founded the United Negro College Fund, UNCF, on April 25, 1944, with William J. Trent and Frederick D. Patterson. The UNCF gives many different scholarships, mentorships, and job opportunities to African American and other minority students attending any of the 37 historically black colleges and universities. Throughout her life, Mary McLeod Bethune was bestowed several honorary degrees. Boys and girls, here's a list of those degrees. Mary McLeod Bethune was inducted in the National Women's Hall of Fame in 1973. The Mary McLeod Bethune stamp was issued by the United States Postal Service on March 5th, 1985. Mary McLeod Bethune died May 18th, 1955. Her legacy is a life of outstanding service, mainly through education. She founded a school over 100 years ago that still exists today. She founded a hospital that saved countless lives. She founded and co-founded organizations that are still helping people today. When hateful races threatened her life, she courageously continued to serve disenfranchised members of her community and registered people to vote. Remember Dr. McLeod's life as a righteous example to emulate. Dr. 
Dr. McLeod once said, invest in the human soul. Who knows, it might be a diamond in the rough. Thank you for your life and legacy, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune.